everybody. Uh, let me swap scenes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Sorry about that. I totally forgot that the music was muted. So you got music for like three seconds. <laughs> um, let me tweet and um, mess like add a message on uh, Slack that we're live. Uh, there we go. Okay. So what are we doing today? Hey. That's what we're doing. We're cheering today. <laughs> So today we're doing well, okay. So let's see. No, let, let me see. Let me ask you. Vlad, what are you going to do today? <laughs> so we're going to like use ten minutes to review the substitution or okay. inter. I, I don't know how do we call it. I call it. Uh, I call it substitution or evaluate or something. Whatever, something, right? Okay. It's kind of the same Small thing. Small step semantics, I mean. Yeah, sure. Same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, depends on your perspective, right? No. What do you mean? No. It's not small step semantics. <laughs> no, it's an like from a like uh, lambda uh, calculus mm -hmm. perspective. It's an evaluator, for example. It's the same thing. Reductions. Yeah. So small step semantics. Interpreter, evaluator, uh, simplifier. Okay. <laughs> right. Same thing. Um, so yeah, we're going to review that code for like a few minutes, okay. and then and then you're going to teach us sequence calculus. Hey. Yes. And then we'll see what we'll see whether we can implement some bit of that. Okay. The end goal for this particular so well, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to say what we'll do today because <laughs> every day I say, ah, this will take us ten minutes. minutes. Uh, so uh, yeah, my uh, my estimations have been terrible lately. So lately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what exactly. Do you mean? <laughs> um, so I guess the the plan is we'll just see. Okay, so we'll see uh, how much we can do. But uh, the plan for this exercise, which is not necessarily just today, is to be able to use sequence calculus to find proofs and then to translate those proofs back into lambda terms, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Right? By like just starting from a to type. Have implementations for, mm -hmm. for so given a type, we'll, we'll figure out if there exists an implementation for it, which means the same thing as a proof. Okay. And then we will write it as a lambda term, yeah. right? So we'll like find proofs slash terms. And we will go by a natural reduction. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we don't necessarily have to explicitly have the concept of natural deduction in our code because natural deduction is a one-to-one -one relationship with lambda calculus. Yeah. So we could just translate it directly to lambda calculus and like the other. We don't we need to. It might be overcomplicated things if you go through. Like no, we could I go to that through I that on paper, but we don't have to have that in code. Okay. We'll see. But I think since it's a one-to-one, -one, I'm not sure what it adds. Um, our sanity, because uh, it will be easier to follow if our we'll see. algorithm is, is working. We'll see. If it's easy for us to skip it, we'll skip okay. it. If it's not, we'll add it. Okay. Cool. But first off, we will. Let's see. Like the okay, we'll see the homework. Then we'll see the like we'll do the like some theory, or we'll explain what second calculus is, yeah. and then we'll try to figure out. Um, like finding proofs, right? And then we figure out how we go back from proofs to lambda terms. But for yeah. now, we'll just look at like, how do we find proofs for, uh, yeah, yeah, for sequence calculus. Okay, cool. Uh, so let me show you my homework then. Um, so last time we were um, working on figuring out, okay, so I, I call it simplifier, the simplifier. Um, so we have a simplify function in the simplifier, uh -huh. right? Makes sense. Uh, and this function does this kind of thing where it, it goes from uh, from uh, to and then from locally named, which is the, uh, let me see, do I have it open here? Yeah, we have, uh, which is um, uh, okay. Kalen's, uh, I pasted it in chat as well, uh, Kalen's, uh, like, uh, well, it's, I, don't, it, it, I think he literally follows a paper called, uh, where is it? I think it's linked here this one right which is a great paper i think this is a like mo more modern okay. implementation mm -hmm. but uh, um yeah like conor mcbride is a like very well known uh, like fp well he's he's like type theory fp category theory kind of uh, like uh, uh, person who like okay. who probably, like does a lot of research in this area um, so yeah, it's, it's a very good paper and I think this is where the inspiration comes from. And then, mm -hmm. but this is a slightly older paper. Like, uh, it, I, th I think it has like, uh, let's see, 
I mean, it doesn't have a date on it, but I think it has at least like 10, 15 years. So this is a slightly more like, yeah, it's a blog post rather than a paper, right? Okay. So it's a slightly easier to digest. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, so we do this sort of thing. With, this helps us with uh, like uh, avoiding problems with uh, naming things, right? Uh, and like uh, replacing things and so on, right? The substitution and basically making sure we know uh, what to substitute where rather than keeping track of scopes and so on. That's a bit okay. tricky to do. Um, and then th there is a second problem, which is why we have this recurse, while well, not equal, uh, which is slightly a hack, but not, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. uh, the idea is that um, when you're simplifying, you can have things like, so let me write some like, random pseudocode here, right? So what if you have m n here and then p q here, for example, right? Okay. The result of mn could also be an abstraction, right? Like the result of this could be something like this once you unra unwrap it, right? Right. So then, and the result of this could be some q here, whatever, right? So like you could have multiple steps, right? But then this could also return a function and then uh, okay. you need to call it, right? So essentially you have to like do this for okay. more than once, yeah. right? Until you're done. Mm -hmm. So th there are several ways to do that. The simplest way that you can do that is if you can define equality over, uh, over terms, right? And this is also a term. Right. But you, you have like equality, equality, or equality modulo n, like the name. Uh, no, it, it's just equal, like strict equality. It okay. doesn't take na renames into account. So, for example, if you pass, um, well, actually, it will probably it won't even go into infinite loops if you do like this sort of thing, right? This uh, lambda x x x and then lambda x x x. It will. Like because one step will give you the same thing, it will be equal and it will stop, right? Okay. Like, okay, if, the, if you figure out a way to recurse in two steps forever, then it will not stop, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But it only looks at, okay, if I do it one more time, are they equal? And if yes, then we stop. If not, then we, we go again, right? So it's not a very so smart algorithm. Equality, equality. Yeah, but it's just literally simple equality. Yeah. Uh, and th this will do for now. When we run in trouble and find examples that we care about, which fail in this case, we'll figure out a better way. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we might be a bit low. Let me, well, I, I guess we need to be a bit closer to the microphone. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see then. Um, and then, okay, we have the simplify function with just, I mean, I will not go in through the code necessarily because it's not really that interesting. I'll just show you the examples. Okay. Um, but like the main idea is that we look at pretty much like uh, this thing. We, d we don't really need to, to do things too recursively. Like we don't need to call this recursively usually. We have to do it when the thing that uh, we need to simplify is inside, right? Because this like calls simplify on the outside. So it's, it's, yeah, it's like details, right? It's not that interesting. But then we also have this sort of uh, simplification where we have first of tuple or second of tuple. We like simplify them, mm -hmm. right? Because that was also something that was uh, very important to do. Mm -hmm. um, and again, same thing with either, right? Mm -hmm. When you have um, either of some left or mm -hmm. either of some right, then we can also simplify that. And otherwise, if we have some left and right and we don't know what to do with them, mm -hmm. right? We simplify the left the hand side to see if the result is an abstraction. Okay. And if it is, then we uh, <coughs> we simplify. I'm not even sure we re really need to, to simplify this. We, we might just, uh, like, I think th this could be simplified to just uh, check if it's an abstraction, then you simplify, like you apply it. Otherwise you just simplify left and right. And then like the equality recursion thing would take care of it. Okay. But this was before I added that, so I didn't change it yet. Uh, but I mean, it's it just like, it, it doesn't really matter. It still works just as well. And like the tricky thing is this open which is kind of does the substitution basically, okay. right? And uh, like it, it, it looks for, like it, it will always substitute the first variable, right? Or like the, like the one that's in the head because that's what you're looking for, right? Um, like but the, this name? Because um, like you always like, how this works out is like we have, like if we have this, this thing, right? Mm -hmm. This gets translated to this, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you have this, uh, like so, Mm -hmm. Then this gets translated to, uh, well, like the names are kept, right? Mm -hmm. But this becomes one, right? Because yeah. like... Um, y will be zero. Exactly. Okay. Right, so like zero is the closest one. Mm -hmm. um, so then basically you have to find like to replace X and then like you start by zero, but then if you find another abstraction, increase by one. Mm -hmm. So you basically keep track of, but like you always replace this, this one, right? The biggest one. 
the largest one rather uh, or something like that okay. uh, if it exists right so you need to, to keep track if it's there mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, and then I don't think we're even using substitute anymore because uh, this is, yeah, I, I need to delete this because this is the wrong version before. Uh, okay, I, do we use map keys? Okay, we use map keys. Uh, do we use locally named free variables? I don't think so. So these were some attempts that I had earlier. I was trying to look for like, uh, uh, oh, actually, no, so I think I don't need any of this. So let me, oops, not. Okay, let me let me make sure I don't delete something I actually need. So I don't think I need this or uh, nor this. Um, so let's see if it's still compiled. It doesn't. Okay, so we need a fresh name. Oh, I remember why we need a fresh name. I'll explain it in a second. So this we don't need indeed, but we need fresh name. Okay, so there. Uh, okay, then I need this as well. Never mind, I need everything, and I'll show you the example why I need them in a second. Let, let me show you the tests. Uh, where is it? Test. Simplifier. Okay, so let's let's look at the test then. Um, okay, so we have a couple like the simple test, right? Where, for example, we don't simplify variables to anything. Uh, so to simplify to nothing means that it should be the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. After you simplify it, it, it you should get the same thing, right? It, there's no change, right? So mm -hmm. you cannot simplify something like this. But then, uh, so this simplifies to y, for example, right? Yeah. And that works totally fine. Uh, this simplifies to lambda. So this is like an example where you still have a lambda at the end, but you do it one, one level. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did this because we have the parentheses here, right? So this thing needs like this Z needs to go inside here, gets replaced by this identity, and then it's XZ, right? Yeah. The result. Um, this is an example of identity of identity, and we get back identity mm -hmm. and so on, right? Some examples here. I think this one is uh, two arguments, right? Mm -hmm where we parenthesize them, right? X goes here yeah. and then uh, like Y goes there and X goes there, whatever. Um, okay, so this, uh, in this case, we need to be sure that, uh, like you see, th they're both called uh, uh, X here, right? Yeah. But when you pass this here, this should not go here, right? Yeah. The result should be this identity, yeah. which is like, this is a tricky example. Yeah. So this tested that, that the tool and from locally named do the correct thing, right? So this was, mm -hmm. we're starting to right. find interesting examples. Yeah. Um, and then this is also a very interesting example. And this is why we need to f a fresh name. Okay, okay. So what does this do? So when we, like, we have to replace Y with X. Mm -hmm. But if we do it, we'll essentially, yeah, uh, yeah we, we bind mm -hmm. Y. And we don't, we, we have to not bind Y. Mm -hmm. So we need to rename this thing, right? Okay. Uh, so the way we do it is uh, like first we try y and if y is still okay, right? If no previously unbound variables become bound by keeping y here, then we keep it as is. Like for example here, right? This is fine because this x was already okay. bound Wouldn't to x. Would it be easy to just rename the one you want to substitute it? No, you cannot rename this because this is a free variable. It's going to ah, be a yeah, constant sorry. from yeah, outside, yeah, sorry, right? Sorry, yeah. Like this, this is the only yeah, thing yeah, you sorry, can also sorry, rename. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So you have to rename this, yeah. right? So, uh, hey, looks like you handle my tricky cases. Yeah. I need to come up with new ones. I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Christoph. So yeah, the idea is that uh, like, and we're looking for a fresh name for this, yeah, right? Yeah. And we try mm -hmm. from Y, we try Y, but here it's not yeah. correct. And then Y1 through zero through Y1000. Mm -hmm. And if you fail, the program crashes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the current algorithm. But if we don't find a fresh variable between y0 and y1000, we crash the program. I mean, I didn't really want to return <laughs> maybes, <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense. We can, I, I don't think we'll have a thousand y variables in a program. Uh, so I didn't want to deal with, uh, with that sort of thing. Okay, so then nice. for example, tuples, here is a trivial thing where you have a tuple AB mm -hmm. and first gives you A. Then here we, we start having slightly more complicated examples where for example, we have um, a function, right? Mm -hmm from x to first tuple ax, right? So this is the, like, uh, uh, like we replace x here, right? Mm -hmm. And then b, and then the first thing is b gets added here, and then it's the same thing as this, right? But we're just mm -hmm. evaluating one step. Uh, and then same mm -hmm. thing for second, same example for second. And then here, uh, this is like uh, something that doesn't make sense, right? It's a tuple of abc. So this doesn't do, doesn't do anything because this doesn't make sense, right? So normally this should be a type error, for example, yeah. once we do type checking, but for now we're just correctly not evaluating it, right? Okay. We're just, okay, I don't know what this is. 
I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so then some some things about some like this kind of same thing with either, right? If we have like some function here, we get like uh, uh, like for example, if it's left, right? This a goes here, but the result is y because it's ignored, right? It's like it cons to y essentially, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, we get y back in this case we get gb right because we call gb here um and then the ordering is also a bit interesting i call them ordering but they probably have a better name somewhere but whatever so what, what this goes is okay this makes sure that uh, first doesn't fail if there's not a tuple here and then we evaluate this part first right okay and then we evaluate the first of the result right but this is kind of similar to this um mm -hmm. uh, but like the function or the, the lambda is in the right hand side rather than on the left hand side. Okay. Right, it's a similar kind of idea. And same thing with, uh, with either, right? Again, here we evaluate this thing first and then, uh, or like it doesn't even matter in which order you evaluate, but you fully evaluate A, that's the interesting thing. Um, and again, like multiple levels of eval, this is where I was test uh, trying, uh, and these are not not actually failing anymore. These are still correct. It's just like uh, this. So these were the tests that I used to make sure that the like uh, loop thing works, right? Okay. That you like continuously evaluating until you find the result. So let's say uh, something like that, right? Okay. So yeah, that's the. Did you try that yet? What do you, what's that? I assume it's like a recursive combinator or something. I'm not familiar with it, but. <coughs> mm, so let's see what's the, I have not tried it, so. Uh, okay, so, well, oh, this is Y. Okay, so where is Z? Uh, okay. Oh, strict. Okay, this is it. Um, so f x f k. So, but this doesn't like we need to give it a function right for this to do something. Right, like it's already simplified. So, like, are you saying we should give it some function here and see what happens, or what? I'm not sure what the test is that you're. Uh, uh, yeah, give it a function that performs one level of recursion. Uh, Okay, let's do that after maybe or tomorrow or something because I think it might take us then it turns into a full so I think what happens is if we manage to do uh, I think I mentioned it earlier but you probably popped in a slightly later so like the way we do um, recursion quote unquote let me show you really fast is we do recurse while not equal right so we simply so okay if I simplify it one more time uh, you can't define it anymore <laughs> um, so like we do this right if if uh, like we simplify one level and if they're the same then we stop otherwise we keep going right so essentially if we figure out a way to do recursion like infinite recursion with like in two steps right so as as long as the next step is not identical like for example i don't i don't even remember the name but like this combinator like the uh this one right uh oops right this one uh is this omega okay maybe uh, so this one will not loop forever in our case right because like evaluating it one step of it gives you the same thing so this will just stop right it will assume that it's done uh, but like any other uh, uh, like infinite recursion which does it in two steps would would uh, loop my thing forever so <laughs> Uh, but we again i want to get into so let, let's get into sequence calculus and then we'll i'll have a look and i'll try the z combinator later or okay. something uh i, I don't think uh, so we're not adding typing yet right so we're we're, we're just uh, yeah. like we have typing but we, we're not adding a type checker yet yeah. so it which we can still do it later yeah. okay so 
okay. stage is yours. Yay. Uh, should I uh, pop up the like thing here? Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's see. Let's see. It's not taking. Uh, uh, give me one second. Something uh -huh. technology is terrible. It was starting to. Oh, it just delayed it's just or what? Super slow. Oh, I didn't stop this. Okay. Uh, it should be catching up now. Okay. Math, math, math. <laughs> okay. Eh, there's some slight delay with the technology here. Hopefully, will uh, hopefully it will not be too annoying. Well, for not for them, they, they will see no difference. Yeah. Maybe if I like put it on the. Yeah, it looks a bit better now. I would like to see the chat. Uh, okay, you can do this thing. Okay. 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 So, so tell us all about Lambda, uh, about SQL calculus. <laughs> sorry. But how how in a hurry are we? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay, no, we don't have two hours. Let me okay. see. In the <laughs> sense, you know. in the sense that, um, how much should I go into details, or or I can start and then you let me know if I should. Uh, go into more details or if I have some specifics. I could just give the rules of the theory and then we just digest it and that's it. So I can ask questions if I get, of course. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> that will help. Well, I mean, ma maybe let's do, let's do like a short general yeah. like okay. definition so of what it is or introduction. Okay, what? let's see what we are trying to well, do. Okay, so or rather, what's sequence calculus? I, don't, I don't even know. Yeah, like if exactly. somebody asks me, if, if Christoph asks me what's sequence calculus, I'm like, I don't know, ask Didi. Okay. <laughs> so, so in logic, you try to write, you write formulas, right? Like, okay. uh, for example, I write A implies B or things like this. Okay, fair enough. So that's a formula, mm -hmm. right? And then they don't see the whole screen. Okay, give me one second. I think it's... Um, um, I think it's because of this. Is it? Okay, yeah. it is. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, sorry. Okay, very good now. Give my formula. Okay, so you write the formula, mm -hmm. and then the question is: Okay, can I find the proof for this um, for this uh, formula? Or what does it mean if, if I find the proof? If is it valid in my logic? So Whatever what does logic? valid means? Valid means, for example, if you are in classical logic, like the one we know with uh, true and false. Okay. Uh, it means can I pop in like true or false and then do like for example the truth table semantics and see if I always get true no matter how I combine the truth and values for example okay so I valid means that this is all like the, this formula is true false. for whatever values for a and b exactly okay so okay, whichever a and b I, I pick this, it's always true this will be true okay, okay. I'm not even yes exactly okay, valid tautology. means a tautology okay. right so valid is more like a semantical notion well doesn't matter and but then for intuitionistic logic for example you cannot ask the same question because you don't have a true valid semantics for intuitionistic logic okay and then you ask do i find the proof oh so like it's not just a matter of it's true or not you need a proof as well you need a proof intuitionistic logic you cannot say true or false you okay. need the proof it doesn't make sense to say that doesn't make sense without having the proof as yeah. well you can have a okay. semantics like kripke semantic and so on but that's not what we're doing here sure <laughs> but you want to have a proof, okay. right? So the question is, okay, can I have a proof for this uh, formula. formula? Okay. Which will say that I have a tautology, right? Okay. And then the context is like, okay, where in where do I do my proof? Or what does it mean to have a proof, mm -hmm. right? And there are several approaches which you can do, like uh, several systems in which you can find your proof. Okay. For example, you can do natural deduction. Okay, and that's one way to. And that's the one. That's one way in which you can find right. the proof. Right. Uh, so you can okay. check if you have a proof. Sorry. Okay, but like, uh, and, and I know you're probably getting to this, but uh, like with natural deduction, there's no real s algorithm for yeah. you to find the proof. I, I, yeah. It's just a way. Like, if you know how to do the proof, like in your head mm -hmm. or something, then you can write it with uh, with this syntax of natural deduction, yeah. right? For example, why? So in natural deductions, you have rules. Okay, you have rules for manipulating the connectors. 
Okay. So I, if I want to introduce an indicator or a nominator, I can. Uh, oh, thank you very much for the uh, for well, the raid, hi. Dave Churchill. Hello, thirty-five raiders. Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. Hi. Uh, so yeah, we are. Uh, We're just beginning to speak about logic. Well, I, I guess uh, a lot of them don't of you don't know us, right? So yeah. I'm Vlad. I'm 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 doing a lot of Haskell. I'm sending my A class here where I give uh, my lectures on Twitch. Oh, cool. Hey, nice. cool. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right, so we're, we're doing some, some logic today, right? Um, and then trying to implement it in PureScript. So we're doing FP here, Haskell and PureScript. I'm Vlad. This is my wife, Didi. I'm Didi. Uh, she's a math Hi. PhD computer science, teaches at the yeah. local university. And we're, yeah, we're both FP geeks and like... Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we, we were doing some math and now we were going through like the basics of SQL calculus. We literally just started, right? We just mentioned how... Uh... Hello everyone, thank you very much for, for the follows. Thank you very much, Athos. Um, so yeah, so, so the idea is that we are going through like what SQL calculus is. I have to eat lunch before night lecture, but have fun with Haskell. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll make sure to follow and, and uh, watch your next lectures. <laughs> Right, so we're just going through uh, the uh, like SQL calculus, and we we're saying that okay, maybe we can scroll on the yeah, tablet sure. for a bit, right? But I, let's do like a very very quick review, right? So we we're saying that okay, that sort of formula like a to b to a, we can say that it's valid uh, if for any a and b, we can say that's always true, right? That's but then classical. that only works in classical logic, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Where you can replace. Um, uh, like you can use a truth table to, to yes. see if something is true. Yeah. But in uh, intuitionistic logic, which is what we're interested in, in functional programming, uh, you, you can no longer do that. So you also need a proof, right? You have to have a proof. Otherwise, there, it doesn't make sense to say that something is valid or tautology or whatever. Yeah. Right? So now we're saying that, okay, how do we do, like, what, how do we talk about proofs? And you're saying that the first thing that we can do is look in a natural deduction, right? Yeah, there are several there different are systems, systems, right, to write proofs. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So one will be the natural deduction, and what Vlad was um, complaining is that okay, why don't you? So first of all, this is the one we use. It appears in Carrie Howard um, as an author. Yeah. So right? for example, if you've seen the like Wadler's talks or like most of the papers. Uh, around like the curry howard isomorphism they use natural deduction mm -hmm. as being uh, like an easy system to 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 show that it's very similar to type theory and right. to uh, right. to and lambda if, calculus if you have for example um, so if you have a formula and you have i mean you just if you look at how a proof in natural deduction looks and then you just annotate or you just give some small um, uh, extra amount of information then you ha already have your uh, implementation of your function mm -hmm. in, in, uh, um, in type theory. It kind of translates so one to one very easily to exactly. lambda calculus and yeah. to simple type theory. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's a very simple transition to do. And as I said, there are um, there are rules for... I only know the natural design syntax because it used to specify... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's exactly. a lot of books, right? For example, Pierce's book yeah. and a lot of books in the literature for type theory yeah. use natural deduction style syntax yeah. because I, because it translates so well to, yeah, to exactly. like it, it's always translate between logic and natural deduction to type theory uh, and like the whole of type theory has, uses this syntax quite a lot yeah. extensively yeah. Right, so. yeah. Yeah. and um, let me s give a brief idea why you cannot use natural deduction to search for proofs in an automatical way like to give an algorithm even in very simple logics, like even in, uh, like even in a uh, like intuitionistic logic with anything else, extra, yeah, right? Yeah. Like just even in the most trivial case, we're not even considering recursion and mutually recursive Actually, types or polymorphism even, or. We're doing even less than intuitionistic logic. We okay. are doing what they call minimal logic, okay. in which we don't have bottom. Okay. So if you add bottom to what we're speaking, then you you get intuitionistic. Okay. Right? So in natural deduction, you you give rules for okay. introducing or eliminating uh, connectives. Okay. Right? And for example, the one you use for eliminating an implication is okay. the well-known modus ponens. So if I know A and then I know I can prove A implies B, then I can get B. Right? So this is modus ponens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or um, the, eliminating like the, uh, the implication. I think there's some delay even between the voice and the, the tablet. So yeah, <laughs> that's a bit unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So like this is modus okay, ponens. Okay. So this okay. is modus mm -hmm. ponens, right? But the problem 
problem is usually when you search for for a proof you start uh, from uh, bottom up mm -hmm. right you start from your formula and then you try to uh, reduce it to small pieces until you get some what they call axioms okay right or assumptions or whatever you want and the problem with this rule is like okay for example i know b but how do i get a okay. right you have to guess it which is quite unfortunate if you want to implement it mm -hmm. right so that's the problem with uh, natural deduction and there are heuristics to help with this of right course. for example I, I think the like refinery library is specifically something that helps you do heuristics right and that's what a lot of uh, right. type directed search does that gives you okay you're most likely want this and it looks for more the most specific type especially with polymorphism that's another complication and so on but again they are all guesses right there's right. no like there's no algorithm which uh, gives you yeah. the the answer so, yeah thanks for the for the the remark so the idea is that this line is read that okay if i can manage to prove this and if i can manage to prove a implies b then i can prove b yeah so like if i can prove the top like wh what's over the line i can prove I can what's read. below the yeah. line okay okay so this is natural deduction if you feel the need at a certain point we can speak more about natural deduction and yeah but i think see. that's but i will not go into detail i think the thing is there's so much literature on natural deduction that we can just like th there's a lot of things people can read yeah. and watch so well, uh, another the, super hardcore system okay. if you want to try but this is like okay if you want to the do hilbert it. style yeah it's the hilbert style um, hilbert systems which they are um, used for, I don't know, for proving completeness results and things like this. Okay. But this is really hard to, to, to work with because, so usually in a system, uh, in a, a proof system, you have um, rules and axioms. Okay. And the more rules you have, the more somehow it gives you an idea how to proceed. But for example, with the Hilbert system, you have, I don't know, 10 axioms and one rule more respondent so okay. this is really hard to use it but i just wanted to mention because it's very useful for others uh, other programming languages okay right and then you have for example you have second calculus okay and that's what, what we're interested in right yes, now and this is what we're going to do okay yeah. and now of course um, it's important to point out that there is not one second cal calculus you can have Several second calculus even for the same logic even for the same okay. logics and for the l logic we are using so for our minimal logic um we are going to use a very 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 beautiful what i find <laughs> very beautiful second calculus okay and i would like to try to explain a bit i mean i could just give the rules and you could take it as this but i will try to explain the beauty of, sure. of this and it's quite <laughs> ingenious okay. okay so usually in sequence calculus we use sequence <laughs> which are things something like this what's the calculus and what's the logic is the logic uh, the things a and b may inhabit huh? uh, uh, so a and b in oh, okay okay are wait, wait, propositional so variables it, this is what you need uh, yeah and they translate to types now i, I think this, so I, I think we're saying that okay there's a sequence calculus and then there's a logic to which it connects to. ah okay i, see. I okay, think I that's see. the okay so we relationship have minimal logic this is the logic we ah. <laughs> okay <laughs> so this is the logic we work in and for this, we use the sequence calculus. And like, do different sequence calculi not and have different have names, or do we just say sequence calculus over this logic? We will say sequence calculus. I mean, they, you can name them because you can have like G1 or G2 or and, and they're defined by the set of rules they yes, have? Exactly. And that's it? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it's like you pick a logic and a set of rules within sequence calculus, and that's the, all the information you need. Yeah. To, to talk about them but then you have to show of course you have to build you have to give a completeness result to show that i and mean that's for mathematicians that's <laughs> i mean you have to say that the rules you pick actually define what you the meant in your logic okay. right 
So like the, some equivalence, basically, right? Exactly. That's completeness theorem. Okay. And you do it with the semantics you intend for your logic. Okay. But we don't go into these details. Okay, so this is the logic, and this is the system in which we search for proofs. Okay. Am I... Is that... I, I, I think so. So let's see the... Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in sequence calculus, usually we work with um, sequence. Okay. Which are expressions which they use like a meta symbol in the sense that it's uh, not connected in the logic. Okay. And we write them like A1, blah, 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 AN. I use this special symbol, B1, BN. Okay. Okay. And now let's digest this maybe this way. <laughs> let's see, maybe this can can helps. Yeah, but here, because. Okay, let's try doing this. So let's try doing a, uh, let me hide this for a second. Let's try doing this. Oh, no, that isn't, oh, then it will go away. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can I close that as well? Yeah, Do we yeah. lose it? Uh, mm. Yeah, technical problems give us one second because this is slightly annoying. I can suggest software I've used in my lectures. Uh, I am on Windows actually. I, I'm using Let's View right now, which worked very good last time and then suddenly it's lagging a lot now um, uh, Milton paint is fantastic okay um, but how does it work oh it, it says it's a download but then like it's so we were using an, like an android tablet we don't have like a separate like uh, tablet that uh, logs in like uh, it's literally like screen sharing from the android tablet to uh, so would this work oh okay so i guess you have a regular tablet or something um yeah so let's try connecting again okay. uh, try connecting the tablet again maybe oh, i got the way on. yeah yeah we don't have that um, no, it's nothing. You can just try connecting. Okay. Let's see if this is better now. Uh, this will not change really, so I need to go oh. like at home. It does seem better now. Uh, no, no. I don't, yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it's way better now, I think. Um, so okay. let's try this. Oh, there's still some delay. Really? No, oh, there's like there's still a few seconds of delay. Oh, it feels slightly better. Let's, let's okay, go on. let's continue. I think it's slightly better. Um, one second. Mm, oops. Let's view. Is this the one? I don't think this is the one. This is the one. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's make this actually slightly bigger for now. Okay. So we use sequence to okay. Yeah, there's still significant delay. Yeah, I'll figure it out for next time. Okay, uh, we use sequence, mm -hmm. which they are expression of this form. Okay. Okay, let's wait oh. for another second. <laughs> There's a delay here. Um. Okay, so like we can have, so what's on the left hand side? Okay, so, and these are called antecedents and these are called succedents, but I will call them hypotheses. So Let's these are hypotheses. Okay. And these are conclusions. Okay. So left hand side hypothesis, right hand side conclusions. Right. Okay. And all of these, A, A1, AN, BN, BN, all of these are formulas. Okay, so they're formulas in our logic, right? Right. Okay. 
And this is a meta symbol in the sense that it's not part of the language. Okay. Not part of the logic, right? Right. Okay. What did I say? Not part of the language. language. Yeah, yeah, language of the logic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a meta symbol. And how you want to think of this sequence, you have to, th you can think of. Um, right, we're still behind. Mm. Okay, so those are formulas, is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and then, like, the implies here is the. Uh, um, meta symbol. Meta symbol. Okay. Right? Mm, right. And we can think of this. Um, of this sequence as a formula of this form. So everything we have on the hypothesis is combined with an and, with a conjunction, okay. right? The implicate, the meta symbol is actually an implication and everything on the conclusion is combined with an or, or a disjunction. Okay. Oh, so essentially like the, the comma on the left-hand yes. side means and, and, and on the right-hand side I means think or. Th this, this formula, it has, an, uh, um, it has a name like the associated formula with the sequence okay. or something like this. Okay. Okay. Is it clear so far? I mean, it does make sense, right? Because like everything you know, you know, so it's an and. Yeah. And what you're trying to prove, it's an or, right? So you have to prove one, yeah, of, them. one of them. No. Um, Yes, exactly. So you can have, and th that's a good point. You would see this will be our axiom, so to say. So I will want to search for sequence in which I have a formula in the conclusion and the same formula in the hypothesis. Yeah, so like this will be the good that guys. That will be one of the rules, right? So yeah. I, if I'm trying to prove to prove yeah. B1 and I already know B1, then we're done, right? Yeah. That will definitely be one of the rules. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not. Oh, not maybe not specifically, but something. Yeah, but the, this yeah. is what you search. So they are mm -hmm. not this joint okay. set. Okay. Right. And what we do now, um, and in some uh, textbooks, and Vlad was also asking if we can use this for uh, implementation, like, okay, instead of this symbol, maybe we can use this symbol. Um, but I don't like this symbol. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It is very used in logic, but it is more used more in, um, for example, in Hil Hilbert system. Mm -hmm. And if some magician would read and speak of our sequence, it would be more clear. But okay. I mean, I, I prefer the this symbol. Anyway, it's still a meta symbol, so it's fine. It's okay. We won't show it to any logicians. <laughs> <laughs> Turns types. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay, this is what the sequence is. Okay. And then what do we do? We introduce rules. Okay. And we have three types of rules. Okay. So what are the kind of rules? Okay. We have the first class will be, we call them left or right rules for um, connectives. Okay. Like for the implication, the disjunction, and the conjunction. Okay. Right. Maybe <laughs> I shouldn't write. Um, yeah, maybe so less much. writing would be better because it okay. the delay is uh, it's a bit too big. <laughs> of Sorry. Rules. <laughs> of rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, false, and no. That, that's 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 what we're working with. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so three kinds of rules mm -hmm. and we have left and right rules for connectives we will see them then we have the special rule called the cut rule okay which this is quite controversial but is it one. a single rule it is a single rule oh, so it's a, like it's in its own category right yeah. it's so different that it's a single and usually okay. usually it has uh, it can have several uh, uh, ways in which you can wait present oh, it. what did you say how did you describe it it's controversial well, <laughs> like the mathematicians <laughs> gather around and be like, uh, "Ooh, did you see that cut rule?" <laughs> okay, like uh, what does it do? It well, no, it's not like I don't think it's like the cut in Prolog. If I no, I think it in Prolog it's it's something else. So cut rule is it's a bad rule in a sense. Okay, <laughs> and um, one form in which okay first of all let me go back here to the sequence calculus to the sequence 
Okay. So like, mo mo like uh, is it bad in the sense of like rides a motorcycle bad or is it bad like doesn't recycle bad? Doesn't recycle bad. Ooh, okay. <laughs> really it's it's bad. actually bad. Okay. <laughs> and okay, usually when we will write sequence in a shorter version okay. and I will write them like s using capital Greek letters and like uh, comma implies delta, things like this. Just to confuse us. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Just cool. to be fancy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And this means gamma is a set of formulas. Mm -hmm. That's what I am. That's the, okay. the, in, the intention, right? So gamma is a set in this okay. version. Okay, so the cut rule would Wait. say something like this. Wait, aren't you going to tell us what the third kind of rule is? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's stay with the cut rule. Okay. Okay, and we have something like this. Oh, no, wait. I want to confuse me. Okay. So from gamma, you can derive a, uh, okay, let's say, um, a set of, conclu of hypotheses. That's okay. uh, gamma and A, right? Okay. And then I can also prove the sequence A delta implies uh, pi. Okay, so I can prove these two sequence. Okay. And they have A is in common, right? So mm -hmm. for one sequence, A is a conclusion, and for the other one is a, um, is a hypothesis. Okay. And the rule says, okay, I can forget about A and mingle everything together. Okay. So the cut rule says this. So from gamma, from this hypothesis, I get both conclusions. And there's some a bit of delay there. Ah, they they get like um, what's that? Wait, wait, suspense. Uh, suspense. Suspense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ta -da, <laughs> what's the rule? Like drum Ta -da, roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, interesting. So th this looks like okay. Okay, and why is this? rule bad because if you re remember what I said in the natural deduction with modus ponens that you have to guess that A is the same here you have to guess this formula A which will split your proof your search into two because with all okay. these sequence think of them from um, bottom up like okay I want to prove this and in order to prove this I have to prove both the left and right Oh, so you need to find like the... And okay. you need to find this formula you use for mm -hmm. cut, right? Okay. You need to, 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 to search for it. Oh, and so, so this doesn't lead to a simple algorithm. It looks, leads no. to like searching, right? Yes. And okay. the beauty of this is like, okay, how you, how sequence calculus for, for logic are defined. Okay. You defined rules for connectives. You put a cut rule. Then you put, and this are again controversial, you put the structure of rules again left right structural uh, and a is a single hypothesis not a set yes exactly it, it so cannot be a set what it if there's two so there's, it, that's not correct right there are different versions of uh, the cut rule okay but i think every time it is like a single uh, okay. format so yeah that's the convention when i'm writing sequence if i use capital greek letters and i mean a set of formulas and when I use um, okay, uppercase uppercase letter, mm -hmm. it's a, a single formula. Latin. Yeah, it's a letter. Latin okay. formula. Okay, and then the third kind of rule are structural rules. And I'll discuss it about this. Okay. Right. And usually when you introduce a sequent calculus for a logic, you introduce the rules for connectives, you introduce a cut rule and your structural rules. And okay. then you show, okay, I don't need the cut rule. Oh, okay. You show that if each proof you do with the cut rule, you could do it without the cut rule. And usually okay. they give an algorithm like how you um, can uh, surpass the, the cut rule. Oh, so this is when basically, or this is rather why sequence calculus is better, uh, like an algorithm, yep. because you, you avoid this thing where you need to search for things, yep. right? Or to like, it doesn't so explode. So this is the idea where we go the mm -hmm. day like this is what we want to do so first thing you can do with the subsequent calculus is show that cut rule is it can be eliminated mm -hmm. and it, this is called in the literature cut elimination okay and you want your logic to have cut you want to not your logic sorry you want your sequence calculus to have cut elimination so okay. this is a result you 
one two three so in the casual here are there already sequence with the conjunction the left disjunction and the right semantics uh yeah so for example in this sequence this hypothesis are everything with disjunction right so i prove uh, um, gamma or a right and here is uh, conjunction so, so every time i write the sequence calculus everything that is on the left is with conjunction everything that's i think on if the you right scroll up a bit we, we yeah, actually uh, we literally like said that a bit earlier okay, so if i have this sequence here all right yeah it's lagging a bit i see sorry <laughs> you have to be any day now any day now i wonder if there's some i don't think there's anything like done here Wow, this is very laggy now. Um, but do you have something in the background nope. that is working? Nope. Yes, I think, exactly. Like I think, uh, okay. So I think let, let's, um, can we, hello, hello. Yugio. Uh, ah. Oh, there we go. There we it go. Almost Slide almost, almost, almost there. <laughs> almost there. <laughs> yeah, so like, as you can see, like we literally, like initially when we said this, we said that the indeed go, go, the go, go to this sort of thing, right? Where we have. Uh, right conjunctions and, and disjunctions as here. i said this uh there i had like a gamma right and if this when i have a set of formulas i can denote it by a capital greek letter gamma but i still think of it as a, a conjunction of all the formulas, the formulas. in mm -hmm. the set right so there if i have for example um gamma and a implies delta I guess, sorry for making you scroll up. Oh, so yeah, we yeah, forgot yeah. that it takes so long. Yeah. We need Doesn't to fix this. <laughs> uh, I think of all the formulas in gamma, conjunction and conjunction with A, right? I, mm -hmm. Should I explain it directly or is this clear? I think it's clear, okay, hopefully. So yeah. yeah, okay, great. Okay. Um, Let's go scroll quickly, so. <laughs> <laughs> so should we like just write the rules now or like do we have? Mm -hmm. I want to speak now. So, okay, the first thing we said, uh, the, you want to show that your logic, that your sequence calculus has cut elimination. Okay. So we delete this rule. We will not use it. We mm -hmm. will not implement it. Yay. That's good. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> then <clears throat> I will come back to the um, rules for connectives and give some examples because okay. maybe we want to see some examples. But I want to speak about the structural rules first. Okay because maybe some people know like linear logic and so on and this is how you see it as and this is the beauty of sequence calculus okay right so structural rules there are three structural rules times left and right so in total there are six okay but they are okay you would say exchange um, contraction And recombine. Okay. All right. And let's look how they. So I will write just. And you have left exchange, right mm -hmm. exchange, and so on for okay. the rest. So either they work on the hypothesis or they work on the conclusion. conclusion so either okay. they work on the left side of the special symbol or on the right side. Okay. Right? So exchange say, say something like this. So if I have. If I have this sequence, okay, okay, let's see what I wrote there. So I have a set of formulas, gamma, okay. then I have two formulas, A and B, and then I have another bunch of formulas, delta, Okay. and I prove a bunch of, uh, conclu the, of conclusions, pi, okay. right? The exchange rule says that I can swap the form and formulas B and A. So the exchange rules will say something like this. Okay. Um, so I yeah, can just swap over B and A, right? So we can swap over B and A. Okay. Um, and this somehow, and you have something similar for the conclusion. So the idea is that in a sequence, 
it doesn't matter the order in which you put photographs. Because those and slash ors are associative, right? And it doesn't work yes. in this case. Yes, work. Oh, so, but they're, 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 uh, sorry, community. But like they are, um, so that means that there are some logics on, for which you cannot do this, right? Yeah, that's the topic of my, that was the topic of my PhD thesis with okay. non-commutative uh, logic. Okay. So you drop this rule and then you don't have commutativity. Okay. Uh, okay. Really okay. bad things going on. <laughs> Okay, so this is exchange rule. Okay. It's somehow the easiest, and I will show you the trick how. Okay, okay. Let's look at the other rules, and then I will say okay. more about them. Okay, contraction says that if I have. Okay, is sequence. Okay, I will write it quickly and then give the explanations. Reminds me of bidirectional typing paper. There you use ordered context to handle. Sc oh, so then you cannot do that, right? In ordered context, I guess, if it's ordered. No. Okay, interesting. Okay. Uh, so what's okay. this? Okay, this is oh, contraction okay. rule. So which you have two of A, you can go to one. Yes, oh, so this which is basically says that in a proof, you can use formulas as many times as you want. And if you drop this rule, you get linear logic. Mm -hmm. Because in linear logic you have resources and you use them, you want to use them. You want to know how many times you've used pretty much. Or you want time. to use them as many times as you have them in the mm -hmm. conclusion, in, mm -hmm. in the hypothesis, mm -hmm. right? But with the rule of contraction, you just you can just plug in as many instances of your formula mm -hmm. as you want, and we will see an example. And again, this rule creates problem if you want to have an algorithm. Because you don't know how many times you want to... If you don't have it, basically. If you don't... If you have it. Oh, okay. If you have it. I will show you an example. Okay. So this rule creates problem. And then the last rule is weakening, which basically says that... Okay, so I will write it like this. And then I write this. And then I have A comma implies B. This okay. rule says that even if I don't, you can always we'll add something. E you can always add extra hypothesis. Oh, add sorry. Okay. All yeah, right, you can always add extra hypothesis, or you can always add extra conclusion because don't forget. Wait, you can remove yes. hypothesis and or add conclusions. Uh, no. Well, I mean, if I can, I add the hypothesis. I will just add pi as a hypothesis, and then I'm done with the proof. I think that the idea is you can remove hypotheses, right? You can make it harder for yourself. No. Well, well then, like, if, if we have weakening, then I can prove anything. Because I just add on the left-hand side the thing that I'm trying to prove on the right-hand side. Okay, I see what your point. Expansion. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. This is, I think, Christoph is looking, what you're searching for is, like, the other one, the weakening. So, okay, let's go. The idea is you read them as rules from uh, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So, okay, for contraction, if I have two instances of A, I can drop one. Okay. For weakening, if I manage to prove the sequence from gamma implies pi, P, then I will be able oh, okay, to, to prove the sequence A oh, and okay, I see, gamma I see, implies I see. pi. Okay. So in this sense, you can add... Um, you can add okay, I extra see. I see, I see. Uh, hypothesis, right? I'm, I know I said look at them from bottom to up, but this is only when we search for a proof. Okay, when we okay, search okay. for a proof, we go from uh, bottom to up. Okay. Right? So does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I was looking, I think I was looking yes. exactly like uh, Christoph. Exactly. Yeah. In the, in mm -hmm. okay. I also maybe I mislead. You. Okay, okay. So if I can prove the top hand, the top part, then I can definitely prove the bottom one. Cause yes. I exactly. know more, right? So I right. definitely, yes. I don't use it, but I... Exactly. Whatever. It's a, like a junk in your okay. proof. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't forget that all these rules also apply for the conclusion. So there are another three rules on, on for... Like, like right weakening, I guess, is very important for things like const, the const function, right? Because like here we have an extra A and yeah. then, then we need to go from B to B, right? So yeah. if we cannot throw away that A, then I cannot prove it, right? right. So, right. okay. Okay. Cool. And now, as you see, 
okay weakening maybe it's not that hard you just add this extra junk and stuff mm -hmm. but for example in searching for a proof contraction makes problem um should we okay wait let me ask first should we look at some examples and then come back to what's the problem and what we want to do next um maybe we can do that as we write them down like I, i'm curious to see the other rules as well like okay, get an rules. overview first so look at let's look at some examples okay so we keep this exchange rules so we will it will be hard to come back to them um okay let's look so now we have remaining rules for um for connectives mm -hmm. right that that was the big big category and we have rules for um both uh, hypotheses and conclusions okay right so we have left rules and right rules for each connective kind of like with the with the, these three right weakening and uh, so on, yes right? exactly because exactly okay let me open this <laughs> she's literally opening a book <laughs> because i don't want to look at the rules we are using uh, we will use for in our special second part okay okay so for implication let's look at the left okay the right hand rule is the easiest one it says that okay if i have if i want uh, okay if i want to prove a sequence which has an implication on the right Okay, now I will completely mislead you, but I think it's easier to digest them in this way. Okay. So if I want to prove a sequence which has an implication on the right okay. as a conclusion, I will try to prove the following sequence. I move this A in the hypothesis and I try to prove this. Okay. okay. Somebody is now... This is resembles what is called deduction theorem in which you move part of your left implication to the hypothesis mm -hmm. okay yeah. makes sense okay so let's call this rule left implication oh sorry right implication okay okay and now the rule if we want to prove a sequence in which we have an implication on the left okay okay what do we do this is a bit tricky we try to prove two sequence Okay, so if I want to prove a sequence which has an implication on the left, okay, then I have to prove first that from gamma I can get both delta and a, oh, okay. or a, sorry. So this is a here, and I can prove that b and gamma implies delta. Okay, yeah, okay, so that I makes split sense. it in two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we call this left, left implication. implication. Okay. 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 Um, let's look what happens if we want to prove something with a uh, one junction or conjunction. So what I was hoping. So is there something that we could do, like something simple that takes maybe a few minutes to write in code while we restart the tablet? So I'd like to restart it. Maybe it fixes the delay. To sorry, what? Is there something we could do over here in Pure Script World uh, for like two minutes and as, as yeah. we restart okay. the tablet? Because um, I think maybe restarting it might fix the delay. Let's start to write. Uh, like maybe a type or something. Like think the about type the type for for, uh, for a sequence. For a sequence. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay, so let's try to write the type for a sequence really fast while we do a quick restart. Can you do that, or do yeah. you want me to do it? You do it. Okay. Um, let's do. Oh, and do you want to save it first? Mm -hmm. Or does it auto save? I think auto save. I, I never use this tab, so <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I can quickly so. Okay. Okay, you saved it, right? Yep. Okay, so let's try to do a quick restart here. Maybe that fixes the problem. Because it works just fine. Um, I'll take five minutes break while you. Oh, okay. Work on your I actually bought the Surface Book just for the purpose of using it in my future. Uh, <laughs> mm. Okay. I'm on maternity leave. I don't have to teach in this period, so. <laughs> I, but I think uh, there are a lot of issues with teaching in this context. Okay. I'll do 
Okay, sure. Uh, while it's booting up, so okay, what did we learn from? Uh, let's see whether we figured things out or not. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, so what's a sequence, right? So we figured out that there's a like a like a left hand side of formula and right hand side of formula. Um, so maybe we need to define a formula first, right? Now the question is, should we use a formula type or like, I think this will annoy Didi, so we should probably do this. Uh, where is it? Simplify? No. Oh. Um, this one. The sequence is a list of formulas. Uh, it's two lists, right? Because you need to separate the left from the right. Um, but like, okay, let me explain what I was trying to say. How, how how much do you think we'll annoy did if we just say that the formula is the same thing as a type and use types instead here? <laughs> like, what if we say that a sequence is a... Uh, yeah, yeah, so what if we say... if a, What if we say a sequence is a like list of uh, type... Uh, can we do this in PureScript? Can I have, like, type operators? I guess you can't. You could parameterize it over a type variable. Oh, I could alias the constructor. So I should do this if I want to alias the constructor. Can I like, can I still alias it if I use a record? I don't think so, right? Is it over? Um, you can alias it if you use a record, but not pattern match. So I was saying, how, how, how annoyed would you be if I use type instead of formula here? Like there's no. literally the same thing. Look at this. Look at this. Like it's it's like you have variables, you have functions, sum and product, which is like yes, implication. You've, you've done that. Now we do formula. But we'll have a s identical type. No. What do you mean no? Like the uh, formula type. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see if this works now. Give me a second. Started here. Okay, so you want me to add a like. Um, hello. Hello. So you want me to add like a data formula here? Yes. Uh, and you can have like variables, additional variables. Application formulas. Uh, like this? Yeah. Oops. You can write and or I mean not. Are you sure? Okay, so let's try it now. That that looked a lot better. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. I think it's fixed now. Let's search for the name. Oh, okay. 
Right? Or, uh, uh, what's this? No, they don't see it yet. Hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Check yeah. this out. It's, Whoa. it's perfect now. So okay. yeah, we just need to restart the tablet. Okay. Wait. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so where were we? Okay, let's look at some examples. Or uh, you wanted to ask something? Oh, okay. No. Okay. You. So we look at the rules for um, disjunction conjunction. Uh, yeah. Sure. Or do you want to see an example? I mean, or an example of how to usually use them uh, with like implication or what? Yeah. Sure. Okay, let's try to prove that um, that what how we start. Okay, so uh, we started today saying okay, let's search. Oh, A B A. Yes. Okay. Right, and I want to show that this formula is uh, valid or tautology in this minimal logic. And when we want to look at just a single formula, actually it means we want to prove um, this sequence, right? I put it, I just put it as a conclusion. Okay. Wait, I did a boo boo. What boo boo did you do? <laughs> I did a boo boo. Okay, wait. I opened the boo boo, right? <laughs> but at the wrong page. No, it's not the wrong page. Okay, let me show, let me say something nice. Okay. This is something beautiful that I completely forgot. Um, let's look again at these rules for implication, right? Okay. And in this sequence, we have, um, for example, here, right? I can have several conclusions, or here I can have several conclusions, and again here, right? Everywhere. Okay. And this capital, it's a capital delta, right? Okay. Um, the trick is that this rule actually are for classical logic. Okay. And I will introduce also the other rules. I mean, what I said so far for uh, weakening, um, contraction, and and exchange. Again, um, this pi here was meant as a set of conclusions. Mm -hmm. And again here. And actually, what I started to do without realizing is defining the sequence calculus for classical logic. Okay. But wait, okay. Uh, it's not in, in vain. I mean, we didn't lose time and everything. Okay. The beauty is that the sequence, uh, sequence calculus for classical logic and the sequence calculus for intuitionistic logic, they are the same, with only the exception that for intuitionistic logic, uh, 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 okay. you can have only one conclusion. And that's it. What? Exactly. What do you mean one conclusion? In the sense that here, for example, I cannot have, uh, I have B because I want it to be in the rule, but I cannot have this delta, okay. so extra conclusion. So if I just delete, oops, sorry. if I just delete this and here I put just this, this will be the rule for r having a implication on the right okay. in intuitionistic logic. Okay. So the trick is when you move to in intuitionistic logic, Okay, you just have you can have just one conclusion. Okay. And that I find this really beautiful, and that's the, the only difference between the sequence calculus for classical logic and for intuitionistic logic. Isn't okay. it nice? It's weird. It's beautiful. So fast. Now I was going to ask: Are the structural rules here strong enough that you can write rules without mentioning the Greek letters? Uh, the structural rules. Okay, this one. What, what, what do you mean? Oh, in the sense that if you erase all the Greek letters, do ah, they okay. still hold, I yeah, guess? Yeah, but I, instead of having a set of uh, of uh, a set of formulas, I can have j only one. Like, I write C and that's okay. a formula. Okay. Right? And the same here. Oh, not the structure rules. Which one? Sorry. The intro and limit ones. Ah, the one for connectives. Okay, but I, I don't think like I don't think in sequence calculus you have intro and elimination rules, right? Yeah, they're called they're left kind and right. Okay. Depending on where you have the connective. I, oh, okay, I, but I guess you can think of them as intro yeah. and elimination, right? Yeah. If you More think that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here, for example, you want to have just I don't know formula C. Right. And here you okay. want. So that will be for intuitionistic logic. Okay. Fair enough. Right? 
plugged in. Gamma. Gamma is okay. So in in the, on the hypothesis, left hand side you can have right. Yeah, right. So in in the hypothesis or in on or on the left hand side you can have as many formulas as you want. Only in the conclusion. But now I'm bugged. I don't remember how is the version. So if I write contraction uh, on the right uh, for uh, for intuitionistic logic, right? Because normally it will be. Oh, I see. So that's the version for classical logic. Mm -hmm. Do they see? Oh, okay, yeah. right. But then I don't. I cannot have two versions here. No, because you can only have one thing. You there. can have only one, and I don't remember. Ah, you don't have. You so don't there's have no contraction rule no on the right hand side. No contraction rule on the right hand side for intuitionistic logic. Okay. Right. Okay. So sorry about this. Well, it's not a mess, it's the same. I showed you something beautiful without this in real life. <laughs> right. Okay, so how do we prove this? Okay, then? so let's go back. I want We want to prove this for that this formula is a tautology mm -hmm. okay. or valid. This means we will show this sequence. In the sequence, because we have um, uh, sets of formulas on the left and on the right, here I have empty, right? Mm -hmm. So empty, nothing. Yep. So we want to prove this. Okay, and what we do, we start to look at the implication. Okay. And we, the rules say that, okay, we will move A on the left. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And then again, I have an implication. Like move the B on the and left, the right? B on the left. Okay. And actually what you do here, you do... Uh, weakening, you throw weakening. away the B. You throw away the B. And you... you and I guess this, this is a rule, right? And this is... Yes, these are what they call the initial sequence. Maybe I was supposed to start with this. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious, right? If you know, right. you can so prove all, it. So all your proofs, so as you see here, this proof, well, it is like a degenerate tree. It is a, like a line, but mm -hmm. usually proofs will be like trees, which have in the root the formula you want to prove. And then uh, in order to gain, to, to have a proof, you want all your leaves to be of this form like um, uh, a variable in um, the same variable on the left and on the right mm -hmm. right so these are called initial sequence okay and these are the good guys <laughs> okay okay so see how easy cool. sequence calculus is so easy so easy okay shall we look at the rules for disjunction and conjunction or Similar to axioms. Right. So you want to arrive to initial sequence or to axioms. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think in some textbooks they are even called axioms, so it depends. Right. Do you want to kind of... Um, I would skip the rules for disjunction and conjunction. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would, because this, this will not be... Okay, so these are just, this is an example. This is uh, of a sequence calculus, but it's not the one I want to for us to implement. Oh, okay, so you want to... Sh so how about this? How about we... Um, like, do you think okay. it makes sense to do it step by step? Like, show us one rule, then add it to our code, and no. so on? Or no, that's no, too complicated. No, no, no. Okay, cool. No, no, no. What I would... If you feel that, okay, you've seen an example, good enough, or we can look at... Okay, let's look at an example with contraction, maybe, and then see sure. what's the problem. I, I think I had... I prepared Okay, let's let's chat. Do you want to do another example? <laughs> <laughs> ah, go ahead. Read? Go ahead. Okay, let's try to prove. Let me see if I have. Okay, I have this. Okay, let's try to prove this formula. So I have a implies a implies b. Okay, implies a implies b. Okay, Vlad, what do you think? Is this a tautology or not? Um. Well, let me see. So it's funny how you how you have we have an a, so we can plug it here, and then we get uh, a function from a to b as a result. So we can plug a here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, it's, I always find in the music. So when we look at the 
in the family when we look at the formula <laughs> it, and we think okay is this a tautology and i start to do like a sequential algorithm and then Vlad is like okay i take this a and i can plug in here and i get this function here it's really funny how <laughs> yeah like in, in my head in my head i implement this function in haskell and in your head you, you sometimes even convert implications to like uh, 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 these junctions these junctions right to right. think about this well if i if we <laughs> say in classical logic and i yeah. <laughs> why yeah. do you do that <laughs> okay, but let's see how we prove this, right? Okay, okay so Vlad just plugged in the A's and B's. I can prove formula. it right here, right? Okay, so. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let me show you the okay, proof okay, here. Okay, okay, <laughs> let's look at the, the sequence calculus, right? So what we do, we have this implication, and then I will move all this part on the left. Don't you trust the PureScript compiler? Like Christoph literally worked on it. Worked on it. I'm sure it's correct. So if, if, if we can write it like as a program here, then it's, that's the proof, right? Okay, so we move half of it on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's move the A again. So we have A, A implies A implies B, implies everything implies B, mm -hmm. right? And so far, now we have to use the left rule for implication, right? Okay, we can try to do this. That's from the tone of my voice. Okay, let's try to do this. Okay, let's apply um, the in left implication here, mm -hmm. right? And how we just split it? Then how you split? There's only one way to do it, right? You have like this A implies A to B, right? So you need to move that A to the yes, right hand side, right? Yes, but if you right? look, okay, how is the rule? Let me go back to the rule. Don't you just move the A to the right hand okay, side? Okay, but you have also this gamma. Okay, we move it. Okay, right. I have lost control. Okay, so we move. So we have A and B implies C, right on the left hand side. Oh, sorry, we have A and A implies B on the left hand side, right? A and A implies C. Wait. Right. Wasn't that the rule that you move the left hand side to the right hand side? What was the rule again for, for implication? Okay, you move the A on the right and the B on the left and you have to prove both of them. Oh, like you, you get two things, two different right. sequences that you need to mm -hmm. prove? Right. Okay, sure, let's do that. Okay, so that means that we have a sequence where we need to, wait, that was it, that was Sorry. it. Okay, so we need to prove A, right, from the same set of things. So yes, from, from A, a we need to prove a, a and we're done. And then the other one from, you have to from A and A implies B. You need to prove A implies B. Wait, no. No, oh, no we need to prove A implies B from A, right? Where but what happens B? to B? I'm confused. I, I Wait, need to look at second. the rule again. I need to look at this. Where's the rule here? Um, okay, let's write the rule Oh, no, there. from B goes to C. Okay, so from A implies B, we need to go to C. Yes. Yeah, sorry, from A implies B, we need to go to B. From A implies B we need and to go A to B. again, uh, we need to sure. go to B. Yeah, and then here we do it again. Okay. We split that one again, right? And we say that we need to prove. Okay, let's write A. the rule here. No, everybody. don't add rules. We can do this. It oh, this this rule or what? Yeah, just for everybody's sanity. I mean, I'm my memory is terrible. Oh, so is mine. Okay, so that was the rule, okay. And we applied it here, and we got this A here, yeah. and A implies B here. Okay, and yeah. let's do this so again You have to do here. it again, yeah. Okay, what happens? So you have A implies A again, right? Mm, you have, mm, yes, A implies A. Yeah, like we have this A, right? Oh, this A here, which, and this is from the implication, right? So it's the same A, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have to prove B implies B. Well, A and B implies B. Right? Well, I was pretty sure that was not going to... <laughs> you were, you were, you you were quite my... smug in the beginning, yes, thinking exactly. that this would not work. <laughs> what did we, did we do something wrong? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. 
Yeah, because like you use this A twice, yeah. right? You grab this A, you put it here, as I was saying initially. Yeah. You put this A here, and then you put the same A here, and you get a B, right? So it's kind of we didn't uh, use yes, contraction. Yes, exactly. And I wanted to. I mean, this rule, this axiom is called contraction because this is what it, it, it's doing. And I had the impression you have to use. No, I think uh, we did something wrong I here. I don't think so. Okay. Just a second. Um. Oh, here, on the, here. I think here we needed A and A implies A here, right? Because we have two A's and we have to... Uh, so this A goes here, right? Mm. Oh, look, but the here... We did something very bad here because we need B as well, this B as well. It's here, right? Wait, 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 look. So we have... Oh, I'm going back. We have this here right and then it says we have to prove gamma implies delta implies a oh so you need a delta here as well what yeah. oh but let's look at it from the intuitionistic point of view from in intuitionist dimensions So in intuitionistic it should be gamma implies A and B and gamma implies A. Okay, that's in intuitionistic, but again we did something wrong here. Mm. Yeah, but well, it is right, right? In intuitionistic it's correct, right? Gamma implies A. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's no mistake. I think it's correct. But I had the impression we are supposed to use construction, but apparently no. No, because you only have one A. You don't get a second A ever. I'm confused. Okay, let's leave it as it is. So it works. What? I was going to write it <laughs> No, no, it's correct. I think the proof is correct. Um, but now I would, maybe we should use um, search for an example with contraction. But trust me, contraction is bad in examples. I mean, in the sense, so another way of doing it, of proving it is like here, you could apply contraction and duplicate this A. And I had okay. the impression we needed to do this, but I'm lacking. No, I don't see it. How? Why? Anyway. So the thing is, I think the A gets copied automatically here and here, right? If it didn't, then you'd need to duplicate it, but yeah. then like it gets copied in both places, right? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I have to go to main, but thank you so much. It was very interesting. Thanks. Okay. Thank you yeah. for, for watching Thanks. <laughs> and participating in yeah. chat. Uh, and yeah, enjoy our meeting. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. 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 Let's let's move on. Okay. Yeah. And sorry for ruining your example, but yeah. <laughs> and what we want to do now okay. is like okay, delete all these rules. Okay. And uh, embed them in the rules for the connectives. Okay. In order to not to be not to apply contraction or weaken it, or um, okay, let me. Mm. Also, kind of like if you're using an A, don't remove it because you might need it later, right? It's kind of this sort of idea. Because like the only time you need to duplicate it if you if it, if you if if it goes away from your hypothesis, right? Once well, you use and it. And also some and also sometimes when you do you need it in the. I don't have an example now, but when you sometimes you also need it to duplicate it in the hypothesis, and like when you want to prove a uh, conjunction or something like this, and, and sometimes you really need. Oh, to, like, like, I like okay, so like example. if you have something like a goes to a uh, and a, right? Then yeah. you need to duplicate it, of yeah. course, right? Exactly. Um, 
yeah so so then th that means that okay when you're building like a conjunction don't use it up right like keep yeah. it in the hypothesis and then you have it something like this okay. so the idea is somehow to embed all these rules in the in the uh, mm -hmm. in the rules for connectives okay. so in order not to have structural rules oh so also for example things like okay if i have a like uh, delta i'll just write it okay. wait i think i can write like delta and a on the right hand side and i have a here then i i'll just say this is correct right yes exactly because right. i like just so yes. i don't have to do weakening manually exactly. i just have a rule which says like the rule like the terminal rule instead of being yes. this exactly. it can be like oops okay. it so can this be is this how we, right? this is how we encode uh, mm -hmm. weakening okay I for example it. exchange we uh, encode it uh, well in math is like theory you use multisets in mm -hmm. instead of sets okay in the sense that um so I instead of sequence in the sense that mm -hmm. you you are able to mingle oh, I, I, I think, think we're going to use a list here anyway and then yes. we won't worry about order yes. at all but because right. i think at the beginning when i said what was sequences i said okay we have sets mm -hmm. but actually initially they are called like sequence because okay. they're sequence in, in in which the order matter right okay. But if we will use multisets, then we are done. Okay, right? fair enough. And then there is the problem of construction, and this is hard to embed in the harder to. Well, I mean, as long rules. as you embed weakening, then contraction should also not be too hard. I think they're kind of related to each other, mm. right? Because like, if you're not uh, like, if you can always, it's, if it's okay to have junk there, like this thing, right? Uh, why is this working? Right. So as long as you can have this junk here, yeah. and it's fine then like you don't care if you use it up or not right because right. there can be anything there right so right. then you don't really care about contraction in the sense that uh like it, it's you, you can have like any a that you have here you can consider you have an infinite amount right right so like in like if a rule would remove an a there you just don't remove it you keep it there yeah i think that'd be less hard in it, right for contraction i think it's a bit compl more complicated why i don't know I, I mean i cannot say like for example I'm, I'm assuming that let's say you have if you have uh, well i think that's only that's only true for hypothesis right so can, can you show me the like the rule for implication again um so let's see which one am i interested in uh, e Okay, so that's the left and that's the right one. Wait. Huh? So, okay, if we have a function on the left hand side, like gamma, then. Oh, yeah, like for example, here. Yeah, so for example. Oh, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know actually. Yeah, I guess they're a bit trickier. Yeah, they are. I mean, I'm sorry I cannot show. I mean, I, I had the impression that, that in that example uh, was wonderful if you use contraction, but there are some cases in, in which I can look up for the next time. Okay. Um, the, it is mandatory to use contraction and it cannot be avoided. Um, okay. And then you want to, and that's why the rules, they're not, they, they change quite a lot if you want to implicate. I mean, for implication at least okay right fair enough so shall we go into the actual rules we have the the, si the system we use and we, we will use we will use and we will implement okay sure okay let me see wait okay so this is the sequence we are going to implement okay okay so we will have axiom as you said there, they will be of this form, uh, P gamma implies P, right? Where P is the positional variable. Okay. So the smallest atom. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is what we want to have in the leaves for, for our mm -hmm. proof. Okay. Let's look at the rules for conjunction. Okay. Okay. And we want, if you have a conjunction on the left, Okay. 
then we just delete the symbol of conjunction and just keep A and B. Okay, fair enough. Because they're already conjunct. Right? Exactly. We can consider that are con already conjunct. And note that in the sequence calculus we were discussing previously, it's the rule is not like this. You choose. You keep either A or B. You have okay. to choose. So should I say wrong the digits? Or we forget? No, that's fine. We that's forget fine. about the rules. Sense, yeah. we, okay, let's call this conjunction left. Okay. Right? And if we have um, conjunction on the right. On the right. And remember, we cannot have anything further as a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Then I want to split to be able to prove A and B. So I want to be able to prove Comma. this weekend and this weekend. Okay. So this is the only rule that will, or no, it's not the only. This is one rule that will Produce create a split. branch. But then, like, we need to tree. prove both, right? Not one. Of we need to prove both, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Let's call this right conjunction. Okay. Then let's look at this disjunction. If mm -hmm. we have a disjunction on the right. Oh, sorry, on the left, mm -hmm. right? Then what do we do? We want to have a split again because we don't know which one we have. Okay. So we want to be able to show A gamma implies C and B gamma implies C. So we need to do both. We need to mm -hmm. do both. Both should be... Um, mm -hmm. um, so this is correct. left uh, disjunction. This is left disjunction. Okay. Right? And for the right disjunction, there are actually two rules. Okay, yeah, makes sense. But I will write them, okay, so if we have, oh, sorry. If we have, um, okay, let's, let's write both of them. So, so if we have A or B, then we will be able to prove this. This is one rule. And then we have the other rule. If we have A or B, then we have we will be able to prove this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like Th there are two rules, and mm -hmm. this will cre create a branch. No, it will duplicate our effort of okay. Proving, oh, okay. Right, mm -hmm. be because we will have to investigate both separate. Like this creates two proofs exactly. rather than a branch in, in the this, proof. Exactly. In this point, instead of two branches, we will have two proofs. Okay. Okay. Let's call this R disjunction one, R disjunction two. Okay. Right. And then we have only implication left to, to deal okay. with, right? And if we have it on the right, then it's as we said before. We will get A gamma implies C. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is right implication. Okay. And if we have it on the left, here it starts to be quite different from what we have. Okay. An initial sequence cal uh, in a sequence calculus. The rule were like this. So if we have an implication here, A implies B, gamma implies C, then we will want to prove A implies B, gamma implies A. So what's okay. new mm -hmm. is this A implies B. Mm -hmm. And then B, gamma implies C. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that will be left implication. Yep. But the tr trick is that here it's a problem because you introduce the same formula again and then you can have loops here easily, mm -hmm. right? So this rule actually is good, but not good enough. Okay. And what we will do, we will de replace this rule with extra four rules Ooh, okay. in which we will we'll look actually at what kind of implication we have. And okay. that's why I find this sequence calculus very beautiful because in from this point you will not have any it's just straightforward the algorithm you, you don't okay. have to guess you don't have to do avoid loops and so okay. on. Okay, so let's see the rules. Right, then. so we re we replace this with the following rules. Okay, so I will look what this a is, what kind of okay. formula it, it is. Right, so if it is a propositional variable. So if you have like P implies B, okay. where P is propositional variables, variable, and we have a P in our um, sequence, okay. the conclusion, and we want to prove this P minus C. Oh, then we just apply it, right? Then we just apply it and we get B, P, B, gamma implies C. 
shouldn't we also have Clint like be there? Um, no. Because we're like, what if we need it later in C again? Oh, because mm -hmm. all we can, oh, okay, well, all we can do is also generate another B. And yes. since we can have an infinite amount of these, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Let's call this N0 integer. Okay. Uh, let me put uh, another letter here. Right. Okay. What happens if this A was a conjunction? So we have C and D implies D, right? And gamma okay. implies A. Okay, so this is like anchoring. We have C implies D implies B. <laughs> so the idea okay. is to 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 disrupt what you have on the left hand side of your implication mm -hmm. to push it as much as you can so that you arrive on the propositional variables like the smallest mm -hmm. atom. Right. So in this case, if C is a P, then you can use the next step. We could use uh, yeah. we could be using L zero. Exactly. Okay. Right? Fair enough. And so this let's call this L conjunction integer. Okay. Right. Well, what happened if we have a disjunction? So C or D implies D gamma plus D, right? And here I split it in um, C implies B, D implies D, gamma implies A. Let's call it a disjunction implication. Okay, yeah. Right, and then there is just one case left in which we have also an implication. What do you mean? So we have oh, like okay, so if C okay. implies D, uh, this is like D implies okay. B, gamma implies A, all right? Okay. And this will be, this is a bit trickier. This is the more complicated rule. This will be like D implies D and C and gamma implies B, this guy here. Okay. And D implies gamma plus C. Don't make me explain this rule. I, for me, it's really hard to digest. Apparently for Vlad, it was easier. Mm. So, all right, okay, because, okay, so here we're saying that, okay, if I had a C, mm -hmm. right? And I could use it here, mm -hmm. to, and then I get a d to b function, right? No. What do you mean no? Yes, but this, this thing. But this fun parenthesis like this, you get it, the point. No. Oh. Okay, so okay, if I had a c, I will get a d. Oh, okay, okay, no, no. Okay, so this thing kind of is kind of like okay, this c to d is kind of like this thing all together, right? Yeah. So you could use it to get a b somehow. Only, oh, right, okay, Only okay. Only if you have the okay. D. Okay, so if you had the whole context, yeah. right, and were able to build a C to D, yeah. right, uh, for this thing, uh, then you'd get a B, right? And then you just want to show so that if you can show, D, you oh, right, so, e. But it's like, okay, if you can build this function, which is this, yeah. right, um, to get a B, then, okay, sure. Show me how you build this function, and then show me that, from B, you can get an E, and then it's okay. Something like this. Okay, yeah, it sort of makes sense. Yeah. And that's the single calculus. This is all we have to implement. This is this is the hard part, yeah. actually. Okay. Well, it's not hard. It's hard to think about it. It's not hard to implement. I mean, no. So, for example, there are things like, so when you do quick check, when you want to do property testing, mm -hmm. it's hard to generate functions, right? Okay. So this thing is a bit, like, it's trickier. So it's okay. like it's... Like C becomes co-arbitrary and D is arbitrary and you need to like perturb C, like D with C, or like it's, it's uh, like a kind of a mess. But for us, it will not be hard to implement. No, 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 no. It's like in general, like it's harder to generate, like to think about this. Sort okay. Of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So this is a really... So these are all the rules that we need, right? This is a really neat second calculus in which... Okay, let me say some words about it. Okay, all the construction rules are what is called... Uh, or the structural rules are what is are called uh, admissible in the sense that you can they are true you can you can you can use them if you want to you can derive them you can say okay you can derive them so like um, if 
you, for example, for construction, if you have, uh, if you can prove the how uh, silicon, then you will be able mimicking these rules to get the the the, the, the bottom of the construction. So you can you can use it, but yeah, it's a bit too early using all these rules. Okay, and the same with the other rules. Yeah, they're embedded here. That's yes, and then okay. all these rules are what they are called invertible in the sense that, uh, okay, if this sequence is, um, you can, it holds, then also this sequence holds. Usually okay. it's like, okay, if this sequence holds, then this holds. Mm -hmm. But there, for this sequence calculus, um, also the other way around works. Okay. And for the initial sequence calculus, we discussed some rules were invertible, but some were not. But for this one, all of them are, are uh, invertible. So, okay. and this helps you when you want to find your proof, when you want to build your proof. So yeah, I think this, this sequence calculus is very helpful. Okay. And uh, also it will solve the problem when you are searching. Okay, so then it only matters, like, like the, the only thing that we have left to do other than writing the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, like okay, well, the only, only some, part where we have to think is to is the order in which we apply the exactly. rules, right? That's the tricky part. Yes, exactly. And so you're saying that if you apply it in the right way, which you supposedly know which it is, well, then yeah, you'll get the like you'll always find a solution. Yeah. If there exists such a solution. Or you will say. Or we'll or find that okay, this is no, this is not it's valid. It's not right? as valid. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's not valid. I mean, I think it doesn't matter the order necessarily. But um, I think it will be more. Uh, you can more. You can create a lack of uh, redundancy. So okay. I think it will help uh, with the optimization. Okay. It shouldn't matter the order in which you apply. It's just a matter of um, uh, optimization. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just writing operator names for these things. Uh, so what kind of associative it's what for the right? Yeah, we, we don't we only have like a few minutes left, so yeah. I don't think we can get to, to implement too much. So do you want to do this together next time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I have no homework. No for homework week. for next time. Okay, cool. I just wanted to do this really fast. So I, for example, in fix, whatever, six. Uh, wait, no, I don't want it back. Uh, I want uh, like as. We, do, we cannot use this for implication show. So what should we should we use? Like should we use something like this, or like this, or like no, I don't think that works. Like should we prefix everything with like this? Because otherwise it won't work. Okay. Okay. Or maybe also um, put it at the end. Maybe uh, just... It's harder to type. In lazy. It's easier to read. Uh -huh. Wait, so if we have an and, it should have lower precedence, yeah. right? Let's do this seven and this six. Um, and then let's do this for everything, right? Should be like this. Uh, I don't think that's valid. We'll try. Actually, yeah, it should be valid. Uh, like this could be without, that's the thing, right? But then we should have all uh, like this. Mm -hmm. have this but they're kind no, of no. too small right not very yeah, nice okay. okay and then we could say and fix our um, so this should bind the list strong right it's a sequent yes right uh, as uh, that's what then like this yeah Okay, so for example, we could say uh, we could say something like uh, variable a, right? Let's do it like this letter a on the left hand side, for example, implies uh, I don't know, like. doesn't 
I mean, it doesn't matter what we roll. We just want to see if it compiles. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's a uh, command match one or the list. Oh, because this needs to be lists. Um, um, let's use a way for now because they're going to be easier to type to now, and then we'll see later if we want to use lists or not. Okay, so you, you can write this and probably parse this correctly. Okay. Um, so, do you want to add anything else right now? Do we want to do? Do we want to do like the tree type? Oh, maybe in the next time. Maybe the next time we mm -hmm. think about the algorithm. Because we also need to break down the algorithm. Okay. Well, then I guess that's it for today, right? Yeah.